Thank you. We're going to have a new round of uh, pitches for Startup Spotlight. The, the next four semi-finalists. Uh, but first, let's invite the, the jury on. So I would like to invite, invite Robert Knapp, uh, co-founder of CyberGhost. Robert, could you please come on stage? Hey, thanks. Uh, Luca Sucic, business development and investment uh, major, manager at Hubraum. Luca, thank you. Uh, Alex Barrera, co-founder of Press32. Thank you. Hello, guys. <laughs> And Dilian Dimitrov, <laughs> let's, he's stealing his thunder, <laughs> your thunder. And Dilian Dimitrov, founder of Eleven. Okay, let's give it up for these guys. Uh, and I would like to invite the, the first team, Trade Deva. Uh, Hi everyone, my name is Dragos and since yesterday I have managed to skip a little from the presentation, I overlooked the five minutes which were acquired to us. So today I'm going to try to, to be a little bit more concise about our product. Basically it's a mobile fine adapter, it's called 3 Diva. Uh, we don't know yet if it will be called otherwise in the next few weeks, but I think it will record the EPTV, extremely portable TV. It's all about VR, virtual reality, but also to a certain extent about augmented reality to the use of the camera on the, our phones. Uh, it basically uses the, the display on our smartphones and the integrated sensors, the gyroscope, the accelerometer, in order to motion track our, our head, uh, all our movements in real time without latency. Uh, Virtual reality and all the applications that are made for it can be used in a vast range of, uh, of domains, including military education, healthware. But uh, usually we are customized to it when it comes to gaming. Uh, earlier this year, a company called Oculus Rift was acquired by Facebook for about $2 billion. The differences between uh, us and them is that our product is basically an Oculus Rift made for mobiles. This means that you don't need to be entangled in cables. You don't need to be always using your PC as a source of information and, and video streaming. You can use it everywhere you go. So basically, this converts your smartphone in a, in a virtual cinema or virtual TV and has the real potential to disrupt the audio media entertainment industry during the next five years or 10 years. So we might see at the end of the, these 10 years that the television as we know it has disappeared and the cinema as well. Uh, the prices uh, we are considering are about 40 euros with a maximum of 50 euros in order to, to attract the early adopters of these of this kind of products. Uh, I have set up a mini FAQ. I have modified a bit uh, the, the slides from yesterday in order to be more, more concise. Uh, the smartphone sizes, which are supported by our product, are ranging for 4.7 to 6 inches. We are fully supporting the new iPhone 6 and the Nexus 6 by Google. Uh, yes, we do need content designed for it, but they are already on the market SDKs made by Google with their project Google Cardboard and by Oculus themselves for mobile. Uh, how does it work in order to achieve depth perceivement, aka through 3D? Uh, it works like every stereographic gadget on the market and from the last 100 years I can tell you that nothing has changed much. It basically projects an image on the screen which is split in half so each, our, each from our eyes can, can perceive a different image. The images are offset so this gives us the depth, the parallax difference between our eyes. Uh, SDK are provided as I was telling you earlier. You can work with Unity or whatever game engine you are comfortable with. They are all free. Uh, there is a wide range of applications already on the market in Google Android and also for, for, the, for the iPhone. About 100, but the SDK has only launched this summer, so we expect that during the next few months there will, there will be an explosion of this kind of uh, applications. Uh, yes, you will be able to, to use your prescription glasses. In fact, the, the lenses are fully, fully achievable, fully, fully operatable by, by the means of two adapters on the sides of the, of the gadget. And uh, the main difference is compared to our competitors. Well, uh, to be frank, uh, there aren't any so far. It's quite a, quite a new industry. Uh, apart from Oculus Rift, which are not officially launched, uh, there are rumors that probably Samsung will, will, will launch a similar product, which is called uh, Gear VR. But apart from that, the prices would be at least triple. 
and they only can use a certain smartphone, which I'm not able to, to comment about. Our product is, is universal. Um, the price is, as you, as you can see, were, were much cheaper than our competitors. This is a graph telling us about what are the projections for the, for the VR industry doing during the next years. There, this is a multi-billion market, and we are not even talking about the, the TV streaming and the, and the cinema and the movie industries. This is a chart comparing our, our competitors with, uh, with our product. The founders, I don't think it's needed to, to be talk a lot about them because we are here. Uh, this is the, the latest prototype we have, we have managed to, to develop during the last few weeks. It's a fully functional model and probably it will be able to, to pre-order during the next few weeks, probably at Christmas. Uh, we plan to make money out of it by selling it in B2B and also B2C co um, contracts. You can work with all the major retailers in all the major internet providers, video providers, TV channel providers. Thank you so much. Any and questions? That's about it. I mean, um, you have you, you should talk a bit more about about competition. I mean, you just mentioned that maybe something will enter the market, and that can, can be maybe a calculated risk or something like that. I mean, for sure they will enter the market. Every everybody of these big hardware guys will will just be behind the market as soon as it pops up. So, what is the special team skill you have that you can beat Samsung out of the market? Well, for my side, I have. I think vast experience across the range in IT. I've been working for companies like HP, Accenture, and right now I'm working for Microsoft. I have more than 10 years experience in design, uh, hardware design, server, mainframes, across the range, basically 3D design using all the major game engines on the market from CryEngine to Unity. Uh, my, my colleagues, one of them who, who is in charge of the, of the hardware design and of the, in the industrial design and audit, has an experience of more than 30 years in the, uh, in the field. And uh, the, the, other, the other colleague of mine, which is right here, has experience, has, has an MBA at Harvard. He took part at, at, in Facebook IPO and he, he's a consultant from Goldman Sachs. So I think our combined uh, skills are quite okay. So just one question, because you, you started with the competition, but virtual reality goggles are not something new. You know, they started being hyped by, by Oculus, but they exist for 20 years now. Yeah, for at least for so, the last 20 years, yes. Yeah, so and still Oculus Rift didn't make it to the mainstream, and your product is highly targeted to the mainstream. What makes you think that people will wear this in their house or anywhere with their mobile phones? Because it offers things that were unseen before, in, in not only like in the what? VR industry, also in the media and entertainment industry. Like what? Like, for example, the possibility to watch movies, to, to enjoy your, your content everywhere you go. It's yeah, fully portable. It means wearing a device like this on your head. I mean, Google Glasses are, you know, dying because it, you look like a douchebag with that on, on your head. Well, I think this is subjective. Our, our hope is that the people will, will, will wear it and will not have an issue with it so in their homes. that's basically least. your belief. Your, your, it's based only on, on your assumption. Well, and also on the success that Oculus have, have received. They didn't have a success? Yes, they did. How many uh, have they sold so far? They didn't because they are not launched yet officially. They are working on what they have sold so How far. How many they have they sold on kick Kickstarter? How many? About 100,000. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So now I invite on stage Bitrise. Hi guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel and I'm really excited to tell you about our new startup called Bitrise. No matter how much you love your job, there is always a part that you just hate, right? It's not so different in the mobile development industry. That's why we created Bitrise, to make your work easier, whether you are a developer, a project manager, or a tester. Bitrise is a continuous integration and delivery service with which you can automate your iOS development. We are a mobile app development company called Bitfall, and uh, we often joke about how we should uh, make a startup for this and that, uh, you know, just uh, silly minor stuff. 
Now, we had this really difficult client once uh, with lots of requests for ridiculously short time frames, and uh, there was this period when he wanted the guys to make five, six test releases daily with multiple configuration, then the, this could exceed three hours a day, leaving the developers with some five hours of actual coding and, uh, well, pretty weak nerves. Uh, after a long week like this, our CEO, who is uh, also a developer, snapped and uh, came up to me angry saying, why the hell should we do all this? I swear I'm this close to just launch a startup and be done with it. Um, looks like this idea got, uh, stuck with us because uh, here we are. Um, we wanted Bitrise to be as simple as possible, so we used all this horrible stuff to push up a button. We made a unique visual workflow editor to create the steps you need for your custom app from building through deploying to notifying your testers. Once you do this two minute setup, you don't even have to visit the Bitrise website because every time you push your code, a build is triggered on our servers. Another cool thing about Bitrise is that uh, all of these steps are open source, so if you want to make a whole new step, you can just upload it to our so-called open step library uh, to create the feature you desire, making your workflow custom and unique. As a result, our CEO and our developers can be upset about different things other than making test releases, so instead of looking something like this, they look uh, much like so. Well, maybe not this handsome, but relaxed all the same. Um, all right, as you may have wondered by now, all right, I've heard about similar services. Why make another one? You are right. There are a lot of CI and CD services out there, but most of them focus on web development, and uh, there are only a few in the mobile development sector like Travis, Shipai, or Greenhouse. The part where we are different is that we give you the ability to customize your build workflow with the awesome possibilities of open source, and we made it possible for you to set up your project in just under a minute. Not to mention the great team collaboration feature with which you can easily manage your team of developers and project managers. We want to give you the whole package from start to finish to really help the whole team doing what they are really meant to do, which is making magnificent and sleek apps. We have an always free plan with very generous restrictions because we want everyone to take advantage of our amazing build automation system, not just the professionals. But if that's not enough for your team, then we have, of course, monthly subscription plans as well. Two weeks ago, we launched a silent beta version of Bitrise, and we were surprised to find it on Product Hunt and half a dozen other blogs saying how awesome Bitrise is looking to be. Since then, we have 300 users from uh, and growing, and from which uh, more than 50 are using the service actively, starting builds on a daily basis. Our HipChat is swarmed with feature requests and praises, and we are ever so thankful for that. Currently, Bitrise is uh, funded by our company, Bitfall, uh, with $40,000 so far, but we are looking for an investment from uh, $500,000 to $1 million in order to fuel up on developers, to um, extend our support with Android, uh, and um, for a marketing team to get the word to every frustrated developer in the world. It's been really rewarding to help other developers, but we are far from done. We have already half a year of tests uh, scheduled ahead of us, and uh, I want to invite everyone who wants to talk about Bitrise some more or just to grab a beer. It would be fun. Thank you, and uh, for the questions, I would like to invite the CTO to answer your technical related uh, questions. Thank you. Um, just um, a couple of comments. Uh, one for the previous pitch. Don't you ever go on a stage? Where, where are you? As a pre previous startup. Uh, pl please keep the, the questions for this team. Yeah, please. yeah, no, but, but it's for both. Don't go on the <laughs> stage and say, we are not different from the competition. That's just suicide, okay? And the second thing, connecting to your pitch, do not go on a pitch and say, I am very excited to go talk about my startup. Can't you see how excited I am? Blah, 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 blah. Be excited, my friend, if you're saying you're gonna be excited. Um, now to the question, um, I, I think it's a good, I'm a huge fan of these things. I think you have an interesting part. Um, how are you gonna be different when other people get into the uh, arms race of, I mean, if you're kind of successful, they're gonna come along and they're gonna say, hey, you know, these guys are doing it right, we're gonna do the same. 
I mean, having a good design is, is a barrier, but eventually it will fail. I mean, not fail, but eventually others will make it also as easy. So how are you going to be different? So there are quite a few uh, differentiators, I think. Um, first of all, it's not easy to do um, a hosted uh, iOS continuous integration system because of the hardware limitations. Sorry, because of the hardware limitations. Um, uh, second of all, we are we believe in the open source um, step library. Um, Daniel mentioned that's like if you don't have something um, a part of your build workflow, you can just create it and share with others or pick one from the. I think we have like 51 right now, which contains like um, if you want to use a service where you want to push your your uh, apps. Uh, and share with your testers, you have a, a step for that. But if you want to use another service, there's probably already a step for that. Or you can just create your own. Okay. Thank you. If you want one quick questions, you can go for it. If not... Yeah, mine is very quick. Uh, what are you going to do with a million dollars? Mostly product development because, yeah, uh, right now, we are focusing on uh, on the initial issues to make okay. it. Okay, thank you. Product development. <laughs> thank you. And marketing. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, now I'd like to invite on stage uh, lat.io. Hey, what's up, guys? Can you hear me? So let's pump in some excitation and energy. Yeah. So first of all, greetings from Ukraine. I'm Arthur, and I'm CEO at Latio. And we are re reinventing how people interact with technology. To show you why we're doing that, let me tell you a story. Have you ever had an appointment with Genie's Bar at Apple Store? The usual, usual process is you come in, and nobody really knows that you came in for an appointment, unless you bug some busy employees at the Genie's Bar and and tell them that you came in for an appointment, go through appointment lists on their iPads, and they finally check you in and let you sit and wait for an appointment. So at the busy day, Apple Store is pretty slammed with people and employees looking for the right person to help. What they do is pretty impressive. They approach you and start calling the name, hoping that you're the right person. John, John, excuse me, are you John? I wasn't John, and none of the guys around were. And there were searches for Lisa, Brian, etc. The thing is, those guys probably left, but nobody knew about that. And that's what's wrong with technology nowadays. It misses context and customer awareness. And we are here to fix it. We're building a platform that helps companies to easily integrate iBeacon functionalities in their apps. In just a few lines of code, your app does contextual magic out of the box. So um, our solution is an SDK that communicates with hardware beacons, and our content management system and API helps companies manage the experiences for customers. We don't make the actual hardware, but our software supports all kinds of hardware providers. We charge uh, our customers subscription for our services. And it all sounds pretty complicated, so let me show you how our customers use this solution. For example, CrowdFood is a food ordering app from Los Angeles that uses our solution to notify users that walk in a close distance to a food truck about the specials and deals they have. Also, when the customer pre-orders and comes to pick up the order, the food truck owner is notified that the customer is approaching and gets ready to give out the right order. Sester is a, an appointment scheduling software that uses our solution to sense the customer's arrival and to provide frictionless check-ins and give you that VIP feeling. So we charge our customer. Oh, also customers can be guided with indoor positioning in order to find the manager's desk or to find an employee in a busy, crowded space. We charge our customers sub for subscription to our services, and the market is huge. There are so many verticals that our solution can be applied to. But as an early stage startup, we realized that we need to focus on something in particular. That's why we're targeted at hospitality and customer service verticals, and we're going to dominate it. 
And it doesn't hurt at all that we are three bachelors of artificial intelligence systems. And yes, you do need those kind of skills when working with real world unstable signals. We started uh, earlier this year, uh, got 10,000 funding from Startup Accelerator in Kyiv, Ukraine, and right now we are raising 100,000. So that's a lot here. And we're not just looking for funds, we're looking for, for active mentorship from smart and engaged investors. So if you're passionate about Internet of Things, if you want to bring context into technology, we'd love to talk to you. So thank you. We'd love to answer questions. I have a question about this 50 billion market. Uh, it's more of a comment, actually. Uh, when you pitch a software product and then you tell 50 billion market, I, I understand there is a 50 billion market for a software to build iBeacons, which is not true. So your market is not 50 billion. That, that, yes, like I agree. That's the market that so, can... So don't put that number on okay. the slide because you lose credibility. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the status of the, of the product? Is it on market? Do we have customers? Do we have traction? Yes, the product is fully functional. We still need to polish some things, but we have already pay paying customers, such as Food Ordering App from Los Angeles and the SaaS provider for appointment scheduling software. That is going to resell our solution to their customers. Once again, um, I actually do know the guys from Estimo in Poland. How I believe is that they don't just do the hardware, they actually also do the software. So if you're just doing the software, how are you going to really compete with them? Or yeah. any other companies that are using that hardware to do exactly the same? Yeah, there are a lot of competitors in this space and they're popping out like mushrooms everywhere. The thing is, there are companies that are focused on hardware. There are companies that do both. Uh, there are companies that are closely targeted at specifically retail or other niche. We're planning to pick the niche of hospitality customer service and dominate it. Following up on Alex's question, so I heard a, almost exactly the same, you know, niche targeting in the last four, six weeks. Company called Growl, company called, Con Con I forgot forgot about it. I've so heard what's another one doing the same in Lisbon too. Yeah, so it's a really, I mean, you really need to go fast. What, what makes you think that you can do that? Uh, we're planning to partner with developer agencies that uh, provide solutions for companies and that's our main... On the money side. On the money side. So how are you going to convince, I don't know, Tesco or someone else to, you know, do that or Doubletree by Hilton? Uh, well, we, we just do awesome software, and that's, that's our <laughs> <Okay>. hit. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So I'd like to invite on stage Oblico. Please take it away. Woo! Hi, guys. Hi there, and welcome to Oblico, the best way to meet professionals at events. And right now, people use event management apps. Go to a conference, download the app, and basically what you get is a list of people. Perhaps you did this even here. Go on to the next event, download and install a new app, and so on. But this doesn't really solve the problem. So we wanted to build an event networking app that really fixes the networking problem. Andre, my technical co-founder, he's an experienced developer and he manages a lot of complex technical projects. My name is Adrian. I'm one of the organizers at the Central European Startup Awards and a Startup Weekend Global Facilitator. Basically, I organize or coordinate events every month all over Europe. With this expertise in mind, we decided to build an application that you could use at every event and we'll recommend you people to meet based on your profile. So we've built Oblico. Oblico is a mobile application that determines your physical location and uses a matchmaking algorithm with your LinkedIn information to recommend you the best professionals for you at that conference. Well, surprise, we were not the only ones that thought about this, but we were all having the same issue. It's very hard to scale, because if you focus on the event participant, it, you have a hard time convincing the event organizer to recommend you to everyone, just like here. So we had to find out a really smart way about talking directly to participants. So we went to Twitter. 
what we do now is follow the event hashtag and look for the people that tweet with the event hashtag. Then we determine their location using either geolocated tweets or a very smart algorithm that we developed to pinpoint you to that exact location. Then we do a matchmaking algorithm based on common followers, common people you follow. We read your last 200 tweets, we look for common keywords, common hashtags, retweets, favorites, and so on. So we determine who are the best people for you, and we send you a tweet with a link saying, hey, how is HowToWeb? Here are the people that you should meet that are already there. Well, surprise, we tested it at Pioneers at the Web Summit, just this prototype, just on Twitter, and we got an 89% click rate on those tweets. Now, if you click on those tweets, and some of you might have already got them here, you will get our mobile-friendly web app that will allow you to browse through the profiles of the people that are already here. Now, those profiles are automatically built by our application using the information that we get from Twitter. Users are already there. You can just scroll through them and decide to connect or to message them. That way you can interact with them. You can download and install the mobile app that it's not ready interface with the Twitter application. And then you can also sync your LinkedIn profile to add more professional information. So how big is this market? There are over 800 million event attendees at over 6 million events worldwide. Now, as soon as people will start using Oblico and add their new professional contacts, our goal is to become the application that you'll use to manage all your professional contacts. Revenue-wise, we're thinking about two revenue streams. First one, from event participants. You could use either the free version of the app or the premium version. You'll get the premium profile access to more features, just like the LinkedIn monetization system. The second revenue streams are event organizers. This will come a bit later when we'll have people there. Everyone can use Oblico for free at every event, but if the event organizers want to personalize the experience, add details, or have access to event analytics, they will be able to purchase these features. So why are we better? Everyone that we talk to agree that none of these event management apps really solve the networking problem. But if you look at different types of interactions, you see that applications that connect people based on their location and their social media profiles do a pretty good job. So what Oblico is doing is to bring this tested technology to the conference marketplace where nobody is using it. Not only will we solve the networking problem, but we will also accelerate serendipity at events and conferences. What have we done so far? We've built a prototype and we got accepted into the TechPix Accelerator in Italy. Here we've built the iOS and the Android app. We use it at a couple of events. Then we got a 25,000 euro grant from Telecom Italia in their Working Capital Accelerator. We continue to integrate our app with the Twitter as I described it, and now we've been selected as the official networking app for the World Expo in Milan next year. Right now we're looking for 150,000 K to accelerate our growth over the next 12 months. My name is Adrian, this is Oblico, thank you very much. Uh, just a question to the, to the audience, who, who downloaded the app here? We have people on the stage who downloaded it. Is that good for you? Is it good traction? Is it, is, well, it's good because we didn't tell anyone about it. They just saw well, why not? an app for networking that was supposed to be here. And you got a link, yeah. Um, so the, if influencers are clicking on a link, there's no, a need for that. I have to and say that curious, yeah. for all the startups, that was very smart. Okay, trying to, trying to buy the jury before coming on stage. Very smart move. Thank okay. You. Um, a question, I've seen a gazillion of these uh, presentations. I know the guys from Visavo, I know Presdo, also the, the guys behind yeah. Presdo. Um, there's one thing that most of these um, apps keep missing, which is the, um, the uh, asymmetry of the problem, which is an influencer or a speaker, or someone that knows a lot of people, doesn't need that. Now, yeah. a lot, someone that does, doesn't have that network does need to connect. So it's hard to solve that asymmetry because most people in this side of the stage don't really need this tool, but most people on that part of the stage want to use this tool. So how do you solve that? I have two comments here. First, people on this part are like two to five percent at any conference. So the biggest hundred, the millions people worldwide are the, the ones that actually do need it. And then when we send links and we try to connect people, we look carefully of what type of user are you and we, we determine that you are an influencer. 
So what we will mainly recommend you are other influencers that you'd like to meet. Because here there are many speakers, many mentors, and we will recommend you people of your own caliber. But you know, on, on every event is always a space for meeting high quality people, because as he said, you know, you, you, if you have an intelligent network around you, this network works by yourself without an application. So the problem you face is that 80% of the people want to meet the 20% the of the people. And, and this is simply something that is like, you know, do I want to meet everybody, you know, who asked me the 100 time about, you know, how do I get my startup funded? Again. It's like, I mean, like, no, I am. <laughs> two, <laughs> two comments here. Of course, if you'd use Tinder as a girl or as a boy, I mean, George Clooney doesn't need Tinder, but still people use Tinder because they want to connect. To of course, everyone would, get, would like to meet the top guys. No, the problem is that they use Tinder to meet George Clooney, but George Clooney doesn't want to meet the other 80% of people who want to meet But they him. still use it, and they will never meet George Clooney or some supermodel, but they still use it because they do need to connect to other people. You, you as as, as I said, hope. I plan to also accelerate serendipity. So not just plan meetings with the top guys that you really want to pitch. Thank you, guys. Thank you.